most people assume that to perform privilege escalation requires you to be a very skilled type of attacker. We're going to prove that's not the case. Also, if my machine is up to date and fully patched, unsafe. We're going to also prove that that is not the case. You definitely want to be patched because that increases your defenses. Otherwise, you're going to fall for even the silliest and, and simplest attack. But that is not the case. Also, but if I'm fully patched and I'm not running an admin or I'm not running an admin, then I am safe. And we're going to see that that is definitely not the case. You definitely want to have users not to run with admin privilege because that makes the attacker's job much easier. But, you know, these uh, three conditions uh, does not fully protect you. But most importantly, I want to tell you that even though I'm going to show you some pretty, I would say, scary type of attacks, rest assured that Curator can detect all those, so you you will be aware of all these type of attacks. Now, what I'm showing you right now is something that we have uh, provided using uh, the Sysmon capabilities within Windows, and uh, uh, and we have releases, released some rules and some uh, add-ons to Curator in my public uh, folder. That's that's not the official. Uh, that, that that is nothing to do with IBM official uh, business. But IBM has. Uh, uh, I noticed today uh, that they release a Sysmon content pack. All this work was originally based on the great things that we have released in my in my channel that Mutas created. But the IBM engineers uh, took notice of it, they improved things out, checked for performance, did the right thing, and then made it available as a content pack. So you, while you can still get the stuff from uh, from my uh, folder in Box, and I'll provide a link into the video description, I encourage you to get the official stuff from the content pack, because that has IBM support. If you download something from my box uh, a folder and you tell you ask for IBM support they're going to say no way Jose so the attack that we're going to be showing let me let me write uh, draw a small diagram uh, so you'll see what is actually happening here in order to detect uh, this type of privilege escalation you need to get inside the Windows machine and have the visibility into new processes being created and who is the parent of the process is this you know something that is the original windows parent or something else uh, has the code been signed and if it's a microsoft process has this been signed by microsoft uh, what are the hashes of the executable so i can compare with what is uh, normal and good in my environment uh, has the process been opening pipes uh, and those type of things that are happening inside the machine and you actually want to be able to detect that regardless of the machine using encryption, you know, and, and the approaches has been twofold, two very valid approaches. One is to use agents like Big Fix Detect, uh, Carbon Black, FireEye, etc. You name it. There are many, many in the market for that. And and th that agent is typically kernel type or, you know, has some sophisticated means of watching all these things happening inside the box. The other approach is actually to implement the free Sysmon support, which basically add information about all these things, and actually a ton of information, and it appends those into the Windows event logs. So a machine that has Sysmon installed, deployed, has uh, that very level of visibility. And, and the, the reason why Sysmon doesn't require any agent is because Mark Rosinovich, who wrote this, is, is a... It's the creator of Sys Internal. He's a Microsoft guy, so he has the visibility into all these things. So we're going to be having a machine, a Windows machine, fully patched. And I will start by showing that the machine has all the patches that Microsoft requires from it. And this is the address of the machine. So when you'll see the attack taking place, you will be able to identify it. And we are going to be attacking that machine from a Kali system. So let me introduce you to the players. This is on the left is the Windows 7 fully patched machine. Let me start by showing you that it's actually fully patched. 
And as you can see here, this machine is fully patched. There's no updates available for your computer, and you can actually see here that I'm logged in as employee one. This is not an, an admin account. But I will give you even further proof of that next. So I created a using MS, uh, MSF Venom, and I show a separate video where I'll show you how I use this. I created this mylove.exe, which is basically uh, a file that when executed, it will initiate a, an attack on the Kali machine. So let's actually go ahead and do that. So when I click this program and run it, and I'll prove to you that I'm not, a, I'm not an admin, I get a session actually open in here. And if I do get UID, from the from the attacker, you see that this is employee one. This is not a, a, a system or admin type of account that allows me to do uh, nice attacks. So if I do hash dump in here, it's not going to work because I don't have privileges. I haven't escalated the privileges uh, to actually perform this type of hash dump, which is the, the same LSAS type of attack, similar to the Mimikatz to get Windows credentials and stuff like that. So again, proving the, the case, I'm not, I'm fully patched, I'm not an admin, and then yet I'm gonna uh, show you how easy it is to escalate privileges. So we're gonna show how um, the attack, as you saw it before, failed because I don't have the privilege. I'm gonna show how to escalate from being employee one to system user. And this is the easy part. How does the bad guys do that? So the key part is this one. I have, and the hackers do this when they compromise a machine, like what I did before, hmm, I don't have privilege, what do I do? So this is what is called the recon aspect of the attack. They go and look you know, for your services and they go to see users public, and then they find a service that is defined like this, perfectly valid. I just put cal.exe because I created as the, uh, put an executable in order to create the service. But what the hackers look for is for uh, the services that are created with, notice that there is a space here between company and services, and notice that there are no quotes in this, I'm going to actually show you the, the the actual service in the Windows machine, but you will notice that the name does not have those uh, quotes, and there is a space in between. So, what uh, Windows will do is that they think that they are very helpful by telling, by having a, this is actually a property, a feature, this is not a vulnerability, therefore they don't patch this. So if I have a, if I have something on the C users public, and because of the space, if I put an executable here called company before the space and put exe, Windows thinks that it's doing me a great favor of looking for, oh, let me see what is, oh, I found in the directory something that is kind of a, kind of a look ahead of, uh, uh, of company.exe, oh, I look no further. I will execute that, that command. Again, that's a property in Windows, and that's what we actually gonna use next. So what I did is I took this mylove.exe, which as you saw is, is something that is that I created with MSS, uh, MSF uh, Venom, uh, uh, is a payload, and I show in previous video how you download this with PowerShell and all that good stuff, I'm not gonna make this video more complicated, and I just uh, copy it to this file here that is company.exe, let me actually zoom in so you can actually see that better, the resolution of this screen is too small, and I don't seem to find a way of actually getting getting it uh, bigger. So, and this is actually the real calc.exe, right? So, that that company name, what I what I actually will do is I'm going to traverse to this directory. So, C company services. You know, uh, actually the, the full pad is uh, uh, C users. See here, users public and then going to company service. And in here, instead of going to company services, I actually gonna go ahead and copy that malformed bot file that I have in here. And what I'm gonna do next 
is that when the system, the user, anyone will, oh, actually, let, let me let me first show you the original, what it was legally and perfectly done on the company when people created that that service called uh, company services. So I actually gonna go and start the task manager in here, and I'm here on the services tab, as you see. And I have a my company. I should have a my company. .exe. Here it is. Let me actually click on it and see uh, the, the the properties of that uh, service. So I'm here on their services, and if I right click on my company service, the way that this was defined in the system, we'll see. Actually, zoom out. This is the part I want to show you, that the path to executable does not have the quote and has that space in the middle. That's all I need. Again, uh, taking advantage of the absence of, of that, I mean, or, or the existence of the space and, and the absence of the quotes, I, instead of company services, I, as, a, as a bad guy, I rename my my bad program to company.exe. And what happened when I start that service. Let me actually go to Task Manager, go to my company service, and actually start that service. Let's say that that's something that I can do manually, or the this process gets started uh, automatically. Bingo! <laughs> Notice that I got an attack. Now, what is different from the previous attack? Let's get UID here. And before we got a plain and simple employee one, now <laughs> I have system access, which is even uh, of higher priority than, than admin. And if I do the hash dump, it now works. And I get my, my type of Mimikatz type of attacks. Pretty scary, but don't worry. Curator catch all this. So we got... Uh, uh, it was uh, around uh, shortly before, and we actually, when we expand the offense, and we have several rules in here I'm going to show you, and there are going to be subsequent videos that show you all these goodies that Mutas uh, created on all of these uh, Sysmon uh, rules. But here we have uh, 18 elements and 18 logs that we got from Syslog that reveals the presence of this attack. Let me show you a few of these. Again, I'll go into more details in more uh, videos later about this other rule, but this is the one that I'm, I'm highlighting in here, in which uh, Curera detected that a process was uh, created into a system process. That, that, that privilege escalation has been detected here. If we open one of those events, we see actually that uh, the process was actually, uh, that the, the parent process, which should be company, space services, cal.exe has actually been uh, intercepted and, and, and launched. We're also going to show you later how we do a very cool thing by getting uh, hashes of uh, the actual uh, valid processes, kind of a baseline, and we provide in our, uh, in our box account a set of normal hashes for normal Windows processes, and we actually check when we see any one of those processes uh, running, we compare its hash information, which is also provided by by uh, Sysmon, of course, uh, and we compare it to the ones that we have in the reference set, and if there's a mismatch, uh, one of these uh, rules actually uh, uh, happen. And in this particular case, we see an unseen hash, and we see an unseen process with user privilege. So all these rules actually fire on this and this particular event. Again, I hope I didn't get you to worry with the type of attacks that can happen on a fully patched machine, even with no no uh, admin access. But uh, rest assured that Curator with this with this just adding the Sysmon uh, free tool and, and deploy that, and you can do that with Pickfix or any one of those. Uh, wonderful technologies, you can actually be on alert and seeing when this type of sophisticated attacks in this arm race takes place because of Q-Radar visibility into Sysmon.